clean it up and you didn't because you're garbage. And now you think they're stealing all your trinkets. Get he left me a voicemail yesterday that I can't play because it's got too many curses. And he goes, but <laughs> he was fired up. He's like, they took my goddamn ladders. <laughs> he's like, I, I, I said, I, at least can I have my ladders? And the guy said, you could have one because he had like five ladders. That's funny. And he said, you're not allowed to leave your ladder outside. I leave my ladder outside. Yeah. yeah, I leave my ladder. Usually it's in the garage most of the time, but I, I have it out in the backyard where nobody could see it. It's in the corner, but I just, it's, it's uh, awkward in that, in the uh, garage because I have to move it and I'm hitting things in the ceiling. Yeah, and, but I would say it's a lot different between your I backyard know. and <laughs> medicine <laughs> man's <laughs> backyard, you know, so. Oh, I have, I have good neighbors now. I have, uh, one neighbor's always been great. The other neighbor was a complete a-hole and he left. So now, uh, my new neighbors are, are cool. Good. Yeah. So I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Like, I feel like both my neighbors would be like, Hey, jag off, move your, uh, move your ladder out of the backyard if it was a problem. You know what I mean? Uh, all right. I, I understand Joe that Bam was here. He is, is here. Yes. Gio went out front, but he's down the driveway. So oh, I won't. there, Alexa show back door. Yeah. I texted him and told him to bring him right in. Stand by Alexa show back door. Why doesn't this thing ever listen to me? Mm. Alexa show back door. Thank God. She's so, uh, all right. I see some motion. I don't see Geo. By the way, I have to give some love to Soph. I come in this morning. The patio is outside the back door for the studio is all set up with Halloween uh, decorations. Then there's like a little porch is all set up. And then we come in here this morning. There's little buckets of candy everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Soph is the best. That's Not when you're nice. on a diet, but she's the best ever. Uh, if you don't have a Soph in your life, you're really, you're really missing out. And if you are, if you do, like Mike Olivero, you should be a much happier person. Mm-hmm. Did Gio go to get them from Pennsylvania? I or don't he, As he was walking out, he said, they're, they're here. I'm going down to get them. Wow. Oh, they must have been just pulling in. So, uh, all right. Uh, 727-579-1025 or 800-771-1025. Last night, if you were at the Matt Reif concert, uh, there was a, quite a disruption in the middle of the venue. A woman could not stop talking to Matt Reif during the show screaming things out at him, uh, you know, trying to be nice, but in an inappropriate way, having conversations with him as if they were the only ones in the room, not the other thousand or so people she that were there. She is the main character. Yeah, it was really pretty awful. Uh, but she was later on uh, escorted out by the police after being after refusing to leave with security and all the other things. They had to go and physically remove her from the building. If Unreal. you'd like to see that video, because I was sitting right above it, I have it on the... Uh, on the Instagram at the Mike Kelta show. If you want to check that out, a lot of good video up there, that and the medicine man stuff. Yeah. The medicine man. Let me just give you the update. Calvin, the medicine man yesterday, the video of them taking the junk out of his house has already been viewed 25,000 times. (laughs) And then the follow up video, uh, 11,000 times. There's a video that somebody sent me of just some of the giant dump trucks pulling away with all of his stuff in the back. It's amazing. I had no idea he had that much stuff. I thought he just had, you know, like a couple washers out there and a couple different things, whatever. Yeah, but he had like it looked like a junkyard. Yeah. It looked like an actual junkyard that you could go and buy stuff out of. It I'm looking at the picture on our Instagram right now that shows his house and then shows the junk behind it. If I live next door to that, I don't I don't know that it's a big Alexa, stop. Alexa, stop. Hold on. There you go. I don't need <laughs> them cursing on it. Alexa, stop. God damn it. <laughs> I just see them coming up and I hear them talking. Uh if I live next door to that I would be furious, but I would also be concerned that there were critters in there. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I mean, I it's, it just seems to be metallic junk and stuff like that, but still, those things live everywhere, and it's gross. Yeah. All right. Uh, now, uh, Bam Margera is making his way into the building, and uh, he'll be hanging out with us. Let me see. Where is he? There hey, he is. Look at that guy. <laughs> Sit right there. Get comfortable. God, what a handsome son of a bitch you are. <laughs> you are. You look great. <laughs> Give him the headphones there. Get on the... Look at you! No wonder why you quit drugs. Oh, you're gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, how are you doing? All right, listen. I know Gio probably told you this, just don't curse. I know oh, I it's gotcha. a very podcastish environment. Yeah. Uh, Bam! I could have bet this house that you weren't going to be here today. I believed in you, but uh, people did not. And this is two in a row that you've well, been uh, here and on time now. Here's the good news. I'm forty. I know it's not a lot, but I'm forty five days sober. Good for Dan- you. Nice. My girlfriend Danny. She's a stretch coach, fitness trainer, and. Uh, I, I don't believe model. you. Come over here and stretch me and see how that works out. <laughs> and she gave me an ultimatum, which was her Puswa or the vodka. Oh. So <laughs> Puswa is okay. Yeah, we'll take that. Uh, yeah, that's we'll a good. That. You are. You are. What do you? What did you do before? 
stressed? I mean, because you're you obviously you're in great shape. You're all you got muscles and all that stuff. Um, I actually just moved back to LA from West Palm, so okay, I've been a model for. Yeah, you got model face time. and athlete body. Good for you. Oh, look at you! Did you get Florida bikini model? I'm Miss Bikini, yeah. top five international, representing South Florida. Bam! Show your mic off. We're just gonna talk to her for the next. <laughs> <time. Yeah. laughs> I'm a stretch coach, personal trainer, uh, strength and conditioning coach. I've been doing this for almost ten years. And where do you two meet? Sunset Marquee, L.A. Yeah, in L.A. In LA. Um, she has about had it with her. Um, she uh, she was dating somebody in uh, the Marlins, and uh, it was a toxic relationship. So she packed up her two dogs and Lexus and just drove to L.A. not knowing anybody. And I oh, was wow. in the same situation. And uh, I wound up at Sunset Marquee, and I overhear her by the pool saying. Listen, I'm 43 years old. I'm Sicilian and Irish, and uh, and I was born in Jersey. I'm like, I'm Sicilian and Irish. I was born in Philly across the bridge. I'm 43. Who are you? you <laughs> made for each other. It was just a random L.A. day. Yeah, yeah. We are. You're 43 years old? I am. Mother of God, you are a good-looking woman. Thank you. Um, yeah, that's when when you get old, you don't have any problems telling women that they're beautiful anymore. I don't care. I'm just going to tell everybody everything. Right? Well, in our 40s, we definitely accept it for yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. Well, you've earned it. So. Keep it coming. Yeah, like when I was 21. What are you looking for in a girl? I don't know. I'm just looking for a girl yeah. with a puss wow on it. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm like, I need a high heel, a leather boot, a Always looks sexy, never cute. As cute as a roller bear in the bedroom. Teddy Ruxpin. Get rid of it. I need. <laughs> uh, now I have to tell you, uh, I am a fa- I am a fan. I'm I'm very happy to have you here today. I discovered. I mean, obviously, I saw Jackass and stuff, but I discovered Viva La Bam as the second season was on over. I went and bought when people were buying DVDs. Yeah. I went and bought the DVDs, and I had a DVD player in my car. So when I would go to do stuff, I would watch them. I think I watched this over and over and over again, but I will tell you a little sentimental thing. Yeah. I didn't have any kids at the time, and my dad and I get a great relationship now, but we didn't when I was a kid, and I said, this is what I want. I want the f- I want Phil and Bam is how, I, when I have kids, I want our relationship to be. Yeah. That one episode where your dad was sick and you were worried about him, uh, you know, having diabetes or whatever, he was yeah. going to do big, uh, that, you were genuine, Bam. You were, like, sad as at the moment. Was that Dolphy Phil? Well, yeah, don't feed Phil. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which, by the way, I still have a laptop with a "Don't feed Phil" sticker on it somewhere in this house. I put so many advertisements all over billboards, Philadelphia. everything, airplanes in the sky with signs "Don't feed Phil." Yep. And, and the whole, you know, Preston and Steve Radio put it on saying, "You, if you see Phil, you better don't not feed him." Feed him. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. I actually he tried to buy a slice of pizza for eighty dollars. <laughs> Dude, as a fat guy, I actually said every time I go on a diet, I'm like, I should do a "Don't feed Phil" and just tell people not to give me food if I go. Out. Uh, I thought that that was one of the most beautiful things that relationship between you and I was like that's what I want and yeah. I do have that with my kids I have that fun kind of uh, thing but they really they also respect me as a dad so I think that that's great yeah now and, well, and another thing like you know when I was 16 I was an adolescent punk ass like I would kick the, my dad's bathroom door open and beat the hell out of him yeah. if I did that at the age of 43 and he's 70 or whatever people would be like bam belongs in a mental yeah. institution yeah. <laughs> if, I, if I would ask for a soda at the Wendy's drive through and say fire in a hole and throw it right back at you at the age of 43 I did that when I was 16 people were like that's hilarious yeah. if I did that now they would be like bam belongs in a mental institution yeah. it's very hard to determine what's funny these days you know yeah well look we realize you got to grow up we're we're in a bad (laughs) spot where you can't tell what's funny these days or what you can get away with yeah so uh a couple of things i want to ask you before we get into the heavy stuff yeah how goddamn rich were you during that show because i mean we would see you cutting roofs off of cars and doing all this stuff and you had the the castle and all that yeah i mean how much money wise was that just for show or how much was that in real life it was it was the highest paid thing with mtv i don't even think that they would ever even do that in this day i had three hundred thousand dollars a week for 65 weeks to spend on blowing things up oh fixing it, God, flying wow. people in, flying people out and paying 40 people on the set that's a huge budget yeah but so so um i think we talked to preston about when you uh, i don't know it was one of the shows where you guys went to japan and jackass and he's like but that's all we could do because we we spend all our budget money on japan yeah. and i thought uh well the, for, but for mtv that's a huge budget to, to blow yeah and and uh actually i think they got one clip out of being there for two weeks oh. which was <laughs> steve-o snorting wasabi which we could have done right down the road in a sushi place <laughs> I mean, come uh, on. You flew to Tokyo to film your snort wasabi. You just go to a Kabuki restaurant down the road. 
<laughs> oh man! All right, so uh, <laughs> let's let's get into a little bit of serious stuff. If we can. Yeah. Do you? Uh, we know lately, and with you being in Florida, we've been seeing a lot of uh, uh, news stories about you over the last year. Yeah, we even tried to do a uh, don't don't booze Bam for don't feed <laughs> Phil. Well, because we because we love you, and we didn't want you well, to get in trouble. And I and I think like a lot of people that care about you in your life, we yeah. were all hoping that things would work out for you. I have very good news on that. Okay, I got this alcohol monitor on my foot. And it's so sensitive that I got called in for hand sanitizer, oh, really? wow. wash, and perfume. I can't even smell good for my gal. Wow. Mm-hmm. So, and, and are you feeling like that's the reason why you're uh, you're being so straight, or you're mentally no, ready to be sober? No, the ultimatum over oh, yeah, here is yeah. my, my, my motivation. <laughs> yeah, well, look. Uh, I'm not going to ruin that one. I don't blame you. Because, you, <laughs> listen, you could get good-looking girls, but you're not going to top that, I don't think. I believe. Yeah, Definitely yeah, yeah. yeah. Not. Definitely not. <laughs> and how long has it been that you guys have been hanging out? We've been, like, together attached to the hip besides me getting forced to a detox over a Miller's Light uh, <laughs> from the judge. But I had to spend eight days. But that's when she flew back to uh, see. We, well, I had to answer sit- the question. It's almost five months. Yeah. So I. Oh, she totally runs the show so, in this relationship. So, yeah. so when I when I went to Philadelphia, I had a court case because I ripped a signed Billy Idol guitar off the wall, and I either <laughs> hit it over my brother or on the kitchen counter. I can't remember, but um, when I went to court, they sentenced me to not leave the state of Pennsylvania till the next court date, which was in two to three months. And I'm like, Your Honor, oh, yeah. I live in Los Angeles with her. We have two dogs boarded up right now. My Bentley's parked at LAX short term parking because <laughs> we thought we were coming back. They're like, Ain't my but, problem. No. I'm the like, judge, yes, my problem is a huge one. Luckily, she was there yeah, to so. fly back, get the dogs, right. pack up the Bentley, and drive oh six God. days nonstop to to get me and time yeah, for yeah. me getting out of detox. So now I can't go back to Castle Bam until <clears throat> my my dad's power of attorney. So he knew that I'd be living in California. So he gave the house to Castle Bam to my brother. So I can't even. I'm stuck in Pennsylvania. I wow. can't even go home. And I'm like. Your Honor, what do you want me to do? Stay at the Motel 6 by the airport? Like, w- yeah. Luckily, I have um, a friend, Ed Duff. He's a pro skater that rides for Birdhouse, Tony Hawk's company. And his dad owns Duff Electric, which powers a lot of Philadelphia. So he has like 90 acres of property in another oh, wow. place with 20 acres from Ferraris and dune buggies. It's a lot of fun. And we have this greenhouse with a heated pool, which I can't go in now because this thing <laughs> is <laughs> murder. He you, stares at it a lot. Is he, are you always this hyped up? Uh, yes. uh, yeah, yeah, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. Well, I, I never wake up this early in the morning unless I, the only time I see the sunrise, which I have PTSD from, is right. pulling an all nighter. And I'm like, every uh, time the sun comes up, I'm like, I shouldn't have done this. <laughs> now I wake up at 6 a.m. and go right to the gym. She put me on a very structured regimen. That's and, funny. And every time I'm sore from like alcohol dehydration or, or just skating a lot, I always get a massage, which is sort of effective, but stretching is where it's at. Everybody says that. Tom Brady was, that's Tom Brady's whole thing, yeah. Yeah. And I don't like to stretch by myself. I do it for a minute. I'm like, I'm over it. But I lay there for over an hour, and she stretches. I would lay there with an hour. (laughs) He gets special treatment. I bet he does. Yeah, you're stretching some things. I'm not going to get stretched, (laughs) I guess. Although everybody gets strapped down, just to let everybody Oh, really? Yeah. You got to strap them down and then stretch them? I do. I strap you down, yes. This is getting okay. better by the minute. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we're not getting better. Okay. Your whole body, you can't really move much. I, I move you. Yeah, 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 one of our clients from West Palm is like, you're going to strap me down? Yeah. That's awesome. I've had a few of those questions. Like, what that else do you awesome. stretch? I'm like, I'm uh, not answering that. Yeah. I w- I'm that guy that gets a massage and doesn't know that, like... I'll have, I like to go to Asian lady massage because they walk on your they back. Oh, Everybody yeah. thinks I'm it's always awesome. trying to get a little secret mm-hmm. happy ending, but the truth is they'll <laughs> grind, they'll grind those grubby heels right into your back. Yeah, okay. and I love that. I'm not yeah. in it for the tug and chug. I yeah. want her to st- walk on for my sure. back. Yeah, I could tug myself, but I can't walk on my own back. So, you want to hear something funny? Yeah. Uh, I got well. I think I told you this one time on a phone interview, but I'm gonna tell you now because I'm a man up to it. It was probably about 20 years ago. I broke into your uh, cell phone. <laughs> Uh, your cell phone was released online somewhere. No, no, I know what it was. Steve O. What's new? <laughs> oh, it gets- Hers just got leaked by Billy Idol. Oh, really? <laughs> because I'm reading a note that I wrote to Billy Idol, and, and on the back, I, I 
I put, put a, a number down, and if you put it slightly they slightly, zoom you can in, see like it. Zoom, if you zoom in as much as it zooms, you could pretty much read it oh, that's diagonally. Funny. It's very hard Point to read. Point being, it's all over the internet, so everyone knows I'm not answering. Yeah. But it's okay. It's oh, fine. Oh, good. I'm going to leave you messages anyway, later. You can. <laughs> yeah. You're more than, we're friends now. That's okay. But and he broke into your phone. So, okay. So, so one time we called Steve-O at 6 o'clock in the morning, Tampa time, yeah. which is 3 o'clock in the morning, LA oh, time. Boy. And he was at a... Uh, party at Paris Hilton's house. Yeah. And he nice. was zooted nice. out of his mind. Yeah. And he has no idea who we are. Yeah. And we're talking to him. And uh, he's like, yeah, dude, this, that, and the other thing. And we carry on. He's talking to us. And, and for some reason or another, he gave me your new cell phone number. <laughs> All so, on the radio? He, no, I, I don't think it was. I don't remember. So zooted. Oh, I'm live on the air. Yo, his new number is yeah. actually six. I, I don't, yeah, I don't think he gave. Maybe we got. I don't remember how we got it, but we got it. So then I called him the year thing. And uh, I, I was like, I bet I could figure out his password, and I did. Oh my god! And I got through. And um, anyway, so was I got it all sixes. No, you want to know what <laughs> it was? All threes. You want to know what it was? Yeah. It was uh, three eight two five, which spells F U C. Yep. Fox <laughs> Trot Uniform yeah. Charlie. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what it was. That's exactly what it was. And, uh, it was Fox uh, Trot Uniform yep, Charlie. Yep. Gila. Yep. Yep. <laughs> And uh, I guessed it on the second try, and I got it. I was like, son of a bitch. You want to know what's worse? I did it to Tom Brady one time, and uh, when he played for the Patriots, and his number is 12. So I'm like, let me try that. One, two, one, two got me right in. I, I, yeah. You know what? I was at David Blaine's house in New York once, and I saw his phone book, and nobody was around. I just popped it open, and it's Leonardo DiCaprio. So I wrote that down in my hand real quick. <laughs> and then when it said, to check your voicemail, and I just I just grabbed my hands and went, blue, 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 and it says, first message wow. is, oh, hey, wow. it's Bobby De Niro. Give me a call back at this number. I'm like, Yes, no, really? <laughs> Oh, so then you're not mad at me because I did the same thing. Well, karma is a bitch, and well, that's what I get for doing that to Leonardo <laughs> Well, don't worry. I got karma, too. I got fired. Not oh. because of that, but yeah. in it, so then I sued them, and one of the things they said was is that you were suing me be, or threatened to sue me because I did that. They even made though, all that up. I know they did. I found out afterwards. Wow. You had told me that on the phone, but I, was I like, didn't have a clue. Isn't that crazy? It and I didn't. Crazy. I didn't put anything out there that was uh, that was me bad. under the bus. Yeah, Listen, yeah. We talked to Boom, and he's phoning the lawsuit. <laughs> yep, yep. He doesn't like, even know about. It. He's all larried up down would, in Philadelphia, and so. he'd probably laugh at it. I was about it. to say he would la be like, uh, "Did I miss the message? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you give me a number? Help me call these people back. <laughs> so he'd probably ask you for like eight numbers. Yeah. I don't know why I'm so good at it. I I didn't do it on the air but I got into Charlie Sheen's uh, voicemail during the crazy days. And uh, I remember yeah, well, number one, your meth pipe is ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the smoke shop. Can, he, can you I, get into Britney's phone? I buy it. I mean, I, you know, give me a couple of minutes. I'm pretty good at these things. <laughs> so anyway, Bam Margera is here. And uh, but we, so we, we uh, how, you came down here to Florida. What got you? Like people in Sarasota were seeing you. They were giving you yeah, tips. Bam's at the I mall. I'm very Bam. happy to be back in Florida and not in the Florida shuffle. Yeah. You know what gives me PTSD? Hearing the word Pinellas County, because every time I do 90 days, they put me in P Pinellas County, please rise, and then sentence me to know another 90. Oh, Steve Timber, the interventionist, when he knows that you have insurance and it's good, he will find reasons to keep you there for eternity. Oh. So I would do 88 days at Madero Beach at Tranquil Shores, and I have two days left. I'm like, oh, I'm getting out in two days. Hip, hip, hooray. He shows up, and I'm wearing beach trunks. And he's like, you've been wearing those beach trunks for like five days. I'm like, yeah. Uh, I'm not trying to get any puss on here. I'm married. Yeah. And I just got out of the pool, so smell my ball hang, fake cock. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if we should dump that because I don't know what it means. So does, does he... Now, now Madeira Beach... Now so we I know bad hygiene. I had to do another right, 90. Right, yeah. Then I went to Ocala. For bad Rapid. hygiene. Yeah, for bad hygiene. After I just got out of the pool with beach trunks. So, because I wore them for right. Yeah, but I go swim in them. So but smell you my say that that's because you have insurance. They can keep milking the insurance for So it. then yes. I did 88 days at refuge in Ocala. I flicked the cigarette out in a bush. It was alone in a field. They filmed it smoking like any cigarette would smoke. It was right. not on fire. He goes, you could have lit the whole national Ocala forest on fire. You're doing another name down to futures in Tequesta. Holy Disgusting. cow. Then I did another 90 days. Then I did 200 days of life skills in Deerfield Beach. Then I hopped the wall because I broke my elbow. <laughs> And yep. and they wouldn't call an ambulance, so I ran. Why wouldn't they call an ambulance? Because I kept knocking myself out on new medication, and an ambulance would come. I'd have to pay two grand five nights in okay, a row to yeah. get my head CAT scan checked, and it was all I was always fine. So on the sixth day, I'm like, "You have to call an ambulance again." They're like, "Dude, you're always fine." I'm like, "No, but this time I broke my elbow." Yeah. So then I I hopped the wall, ran to the emergency room, and then these fans pull by. They're like. 
Ben, what are you doing? I'm like, I broke my elbow. I need to go to the emergency room. They're like, get in. So and they I get scooped in, you up. And they're like, dude, let's do a shot before. I'm like, uh. I'm, I'm a year sober. I can't. They're like, let's just do one shot. I'm like, dude, I'm a year sober. I can't. Dude, let's. Do, I'm like, fine. Pull into the bar. Let's do a shot. Yeah, so you can't do that alcohol. to a guy who's got alcohol issues. So I got my x-ray job, machine. Up, the phone's sticking out. And I broke my wrist in the shape of an S because some little uh, kid waxed the half pipe coping across the street like an iceberg so right. i slipped out and broke my wrist and Ooh. elbow at the same time hyper extending it so i had the x-ray to prove it but because there was alcohol in my breath i had to do another 90 days oh my god so you've basically uh, been in prison this whole Boca time banyan and then Boca sunset and del rey and then white sands and then uh, <laughs> uh board prep uh, right Worth. in tampa right lake, lake Worth. Worth. Is this is this Del SAG Ray. insurance paying for all this, or what kind of insurance do you have? Um, Steve Timmer wanting to collect <laughs> money, really and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. dude, and he, dude, they do it. It's so corrupt here. Even she worked at a place in Del Rey, and let's just call this guy. Uh, he was. You from can just call him Joe McBee. Joe McBee. Okay. I'm okay so with this that. guy, he money. this guy would would. Um, on the 88th day of a Baker Act, you have to do 90 days or a March Act. So right. he would let the clients go out and, and hang out with their friends praying for a relapse because when you come back and you piss hot, then you have to do a 90 day. Uh, no. So he would be like, oh, you have two days left. You know what? Go hang out with your friends. Have wow. a good time. You know, Del Rey, he got four is. girls yeah. pregnant. Yeah. And he's married, so he had to pay for four abortions of the clients that work there. Oh, my God. Yeah, I ended up like going through journals because I was noticing the girls were like upset a lot. And I was his personal assistant. I just started like going through journals, and they were all basically sleeping with him. And no, this is a guy who's completely abusing yeah, these, he was these yeah. people. Probably like in his 50s then, so he has to be over 60 at this point. And he was like... Like, he threatened me. I'm open about it now because it's been so long. But at the time, he even was like, you know, if you come for me. He owes me, like, $1,500 for a couple checks. And right. It, it was a, um, a space above Bull Bar in Delray Beach. And he rented it out. And he basically was, like, sleeping with all of these young girls. Holy smokes. He was smokes. keeping them, you know, medicated and taking their parents' insurance money. Wow. I mean, he's married a lot, to a Russian, so he had to keep everything. Yeah. Secret, you're paying up. Here's money for an right. abortion. Just and I read everything. Oh, sure. wow. So it was a very yeah. interesting. And now here we are nine years later, like, it's definitely coming around. Shuffle. And then at Life Skills in Deerfield Beach, they said, because I'm me, I wouldn't have a roommate. But sure enough, I get there. They're like, here's your roommate, Big Ben. This guy is 600 pounds. He's on so much <laughs> medication that that he wouldn't make it to class. He would just sleep all the live long day. He would wake up and eat one of those Vermont cheddar cheese cracker barrel bricks. <laughs> and then he would smoke like eight cigarettes and go back to bed. He died in his sleep next to me, oh. having a heart attack. And then when I woke up the next day, there's an ambulance at three in, in the morning to take his dead ass away. So the, while I, you're in the room, yeah, while I'm in the room. Oh, so the next gross. morning, everybody's like, "Where's Big Ben?" The whole staff was trained to say that he moved along to a different treatment center. I'm like, "No, he moved on to the morgue. The guy's dead. <laughs> I, I witnessed it when, like, it's so corrupt." That it's so because you they know don't want the news of a newspaper. Sure, Life dying skills, in there. Big Ben dies. No, they just tell everybody he moved along to a different facility. Yeah, the facility is the morgue. He's dead. Do you know the wrestler that is Scott Hall? Do you remember Scott Hall? He was no. uh, he was famous in the eighties and nineties and in the two thousands. He was a, he was an NWO. He was a Hall of Fame member. Like he was a big Hulk Hogan represent. <laughs> so <laughs> Scott Hall. I know him. I just talked to him yesterday. Yeah, not, not a fan. <laughs> I'm like, uh, uh, Nick, I'm gonna no. see him today and have some dinner or lunch. So yeah. so Scott Hall uh, spent time in and out of rehab here, and he told me he went to Madeira Beach. Yeah. And while he was there, because he, he was a sex addict, he was a drug addict, yeah. and he said he's there, and there's guys selling uh, drugs across the street in the parking lot. Like, you'd see it from the room. Yeah. The girls were, or there were hookers that were yeah. coming by all the yeah. time. And he said it's designed to just keep you in there and keep oh, that cycle going. Yeah. That's insane. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they hired a guy to sit across the street uh, looking too. all shady just to mm -hmm. give you the temptation. Right. If, Dude, if you're a crackhead or a meth head or a heroin addict and you see that and you're jonesing and you have a couple dollars in your pocket and you know that you could run across yeah, the street, right you're yeah. going to do it. They want you to relapse. They want you there forever because it's $1,300 a night for a cop. Right. What's your you, worth? Yeah, if you think about it, like if you put it on paper, I'm up I mean, to six hundred sixty thousand dollars. They're paying Ooh. all this money, and oh, then it's basically, you know, they're just they they're robbing you. Snatching. I watched a documentary. On, they don't want you to get well. No, I, oh, I watched I a documentary went, on the I rehab. I went in on for Adderall and alcohol, and. In there, I was on bipropion, propanolol, lithium, latuda, vipitrol, <laughs> way vistrol, more. Naltrexone, trazodone, respiratol, metam metaformin, 
I was a zombie. I couldn't even cry or spooge. <laughs> if you if you are like this sober, what must you be like on Adderall? Oh my god! <laughs> I said, I'm like, dude, right? you did drugs. I was like, here's oh, me on Adderall. You're good. Wow, that's a neat painting. Oh, a guitar, bling yeah. skittles. <laughs> <with my bikes. laughs> the other night, he had two cups of coffee at 6 p.m. so he could skate, and I literally watched the waiter pour another one, and I'm like, please no, no yeah. more, no I'm more, like, because I live with him and I love him, but at eight o'clock at night, I'm like, can we start? watching like horror flicks now yeah. well the only person like, you can blame is you because you just bought me a triple shot of from the wawa down there. <laughs> it's actually the 7-eleven he uh sober bam makes good sweet love to you he's amazing oh amazing that's my <laughs> wife will <laughs> never use that word never use that word do you know anything about bam though i'll tell everybody and i don't care about the haters but um my best friend said it well jessica she said you know what's funny about bam is like He's the exact same even when he's buzzed. He's always funny. Like, yes. He's not like a mean unless he gets pushed to a place. But yeah. he's literally like this all of the time. Yeah. So, well, I, I would I would hope so. As a fan, I love this. I yeah, love he's that really he's like here. This a lot. And it's here, not- like, let's take a look at Viva La Bam. I dropped a grand piano a thousand feet up on a crane onto my car. Right. And now I simply kick the windshield of my Bentley, spidering it. And they want to lock me up because I'm out of control. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, where were you when I dropped a grand piano right. used a to thousand be, feet high? This used onto to be my art. Car. Yeah. And yeah, it used to be art. Now they pull up at Radnor um, in I Philadelphia. I was actually asking if we could and clear And the police that up. see the spidered windshield with my foot hanging through it with all bloody. And they're like, ma'am, have you been harmed? She's like, no, he's not mad at me. He did it out of joy. She's like, what do you mean? He's just talked to his lawyer and said that you get to FaceTime his son who he hasn't seen in 200 days. So he went, hell yeah. <laughs> and oh, I, I, I did, that's right. He's like, so he kicked his own Bentley windshield out of joy? <laughs> He's like, yeah, he, he gets to talk to his son now. You never heard of a joy kick before? <laughs> a joy kick. Where's joy your kick. son now? <laughs> He's in uh, Los Angeles. And do you get to everything cool with him? You get to I, see him? I get to FaceTime him like three times a week, but it's it's so funny. Just How old is he? He's five. Oh, okay. Uh, born on Christmas, but... Um, if it, if it's a scheduled time of five o'clock p.m. L.A. time, if I call it four fifty eight, no answer. Four fifty eight, wow. no answer. Four fifty nine, no answer. Then five o'clock sharp, she'll answer wow. because she has to. Yeah, but, what a pain oh, in the ass. Why that would is. I? Why would I answer two minutes early? It's not the rules. Oh, you know? I hate so that. It's, it's a real. Pain. That's why I say when you get divorced, like my wife yeah. and I have been married to be twenty one years. Oh, good she's job. the best. Good yeah, job, I love good her. Good job. Good job. But if we were ever gonna get divorced and she was gonna try to take the kids and all this stuff, I'd be like, look, let's go hiking one last time and be friends. And then give her a boot right off the side and be like, I don't know what happened. She uh-huh. fell. Yeah, it's so you, much easier than going through what you fishing. did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Hey, babe, want to go fishing? You, you never want to fish. Uh, I do today. <laughs> uh, Bam Margera is here, and I'm sorry, but I don't know your your Danny. first name. Danny. I'm, Danny. I'm sorry, yeah. Danny. Yeah, uh, that's okay. I was talking to Gio. So yeah, Gio. Like Gio now. probably told me, and I just got all excited. Okay. Uh, Danny and uh, and Bam are here. She's a tall glass of water. Isn't she, she is gorgeous. <laughs> listen, I'm going to tell you right now. I get Napoleon syndrome when she has those five inch heels on. It. Listen, let her stretch you. Don't even fight this. Uh, I'll you can see Bam uh, this weekend. He's going to be at the Spook Cala event. Yeah. Uh, th- let me tell you, I don't. These comic cons and Spook cons have gotten the best celebrities now. Yeah, you're going to be there. Our buddy Kevin Smith is going to be there. The so entire funny. screams uh, yes. people eat. Scott Ian from Anthrax is going to be about there. Jason Mewes. Jason Mewes yeah. is going to be there as well. They'll cool. be there together. Yeah, uh, yeah. I usually do. Somewhere. We saw Tom Arnold. Tom Arnold's good. He's at the airport. He's a good dude. Yep. All right, I have to talk to you about uh, Steve-O. Yeah. Now, uh, I, I need to know what your relationship status is with him. And full disclosure, Steve-O and I are friends. Yeah. We have matching tattoos. We have matching grinder logo tattoos that we got together because we're two big homos. <laughs> uh, but, um, I want to know what your version of your relationship is now, and then I'll tell you what Steve said. Well, right now, I... I just don't really want to talk to anybody. I have such a small bubble of friends that, right. that I like. If I, As soon as I start letting a whole bunch of people in, then I start not responding to the important one. You know? Yeah. And, and I'm kind of ticked off that he made me do this Steve-O tour. Right. And he said that he would pay me a, a great amount to, to go on stage before him as a comedy act. And we did it. We had fun. It was a blast. It was a success. He didn't want me to drink. I didn't. That was easy. Uh-huh. But when it was time to pay me... He put it in a Phoenix the Wolf trust fund that he can't get till he's eighteen. I'm like, why does he? Why does Phoenix get my money now in eighteen years? Right. Like, was I that not my, your? I did my work. Now pay me. That wasn't your well, agreement. No, the agreement was if you I would... do a job for you, you give me money. You don't give it to Phoenix in fifteen years. Right. But so so I didn't know that. I I yeah. reached out to him yesterday and I said, hey, just a heads up. 
Bam's coming in tomorrow, and I don't get into the personal stuff, so I didn't yeah. know how you guys got along. And I, you want me to tell you what? I'll read exactly what he you said. You can read it, but but here's here's the thing: when I see somebody like Knoxville or Steve O or Novak, they, they don't say, "Yo, Bam, how you doing?" I'm like, "Oh, I'm good." They're like, "So, Bam, how you doing?" I'm like, "I'm good." Oh yeah, you want to keep telling yourself that? Like what? Dude, I've been drinking a month. Yeah, right. I, I saw you at the Applebee's uh, uh, bar, and you're sitting there. Yeah, I was sitting at the bar. I was having a ginger ale. Yeah. But, you man, know, I'm, I'm going like, well, to tell you. Doing? Can I tell you real quick? Oh. I don't. This is my first day of meeting you. If I didn't know. Hold on. Alexa, stop. Sorry. I hit the wrong button. I, I don't know your personality. So if I didn't know you, I would think this guy's way too hyper. He's got to be on something. I'm glad you're here. And oh, I'm glad I'm you're hyper. up on espresso. Right. But that's awesome. But I, <laughs> I would think also. This is normal. I, I, right. I, right. But I would also, if I was your friend, I'd be worried about you just for your health. And I think some of these guys, like, let me tell you what, what Steve-O said. Yeah. Uh, I, he said, first of all, I said he's uh, he's there. And he said, woohoo. And then he said, I lost contact with him. I don't know if he's cool with me or not, but I'd love it if you could find out. Yeah. And I'm only telling you this because you may wonder how they really feel. And he didn't tell me, you know, hey, go do this. Go no, do I, I even asked him, I said, do you want to come on the air today and talk to him if he wants to? And he said yes. And then he said he was, he texted me this morning. Well, and said he was I'd out rather late. not right now. Yeah. I, I have no issue with him. I, I love him big time. But, but right now I'm really focused on just Danny's scheduled work regimen. I, I had never had a nine to five job. I'd never had a boss. I'd never had anybody tell me what to do. So if I feel like sleeping at 4 a.m., that's when I go to sleep. If I feel like sleeping at 4 p.m., that's whenever I'm tired is when I go to bed. Yeah. This is the first time I've ever had a wake up. We have to go to the gym. Then we have to hike the dogs. Then we have to go get lunch. And then you get to go skateboarding with your friends. And then you can read a book or do some art or go swim or whatever. Yeah. But, you but see, have, it seems like Danny. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come in here and say that I think brotherly love always stays, mm -hmm. and I think that when timing is everything, and I do believe, you know, that um, when all the noise maybe calms down, I think that everything will be fine. Yeah. Well, I'm look, you do it at your own pace. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I think it's important to know because at certain times, especially when you're not in the right head of, frame of mind, you got to wonder how these people really feel about you. Yeah. And it seems to me as an outsider that at least this guy's got nothing but love for you. You know what yeah, I mean? And yeah, and I have nothing but love for him, but I just, you know, it's it's like, okay, I I did your tour, and now pay me. Like, no, yeah. I'm setting up a Phoenix the Wolf Trust Fund to where he can't get your money. Why does he get my Yo, money in 15 at, years? I'll go get that money if you have 10%. I need <laughs> your money to spend it on getting drugs. Uh, last time I checked, I'm a millionaire. Yeah. I could go get it myself. I don't need your check. That's what, that's another thing I want to know. How much money we have? We loaded? We still got enough money? Because you, you said you never had a real job, and yeah. you never had a you, well, you still never well, timing is everything and nobody knew that jackass would be as big as it was when we were doing it right so like a light switch overnight it was a huge success and i already had bam merch bam wallets bam sunglasses bam shoes bam skateboards and i sold them through the roof so i made a a couple million from audio shoes element electric sunglasses clive backpack spitfire so you're stuff. good yeah so I'm getting sponsored checks already, and and Jackass is trying to print up Johnny Knoxville stuff and Jackass stuff, and, and they can't get it out in time. And I I already you went already down had your market. stuff. Would you, are you uh, are you? Just, I watched the last Jackass one that you were in, and it makes me laugh so much. But I also feel like there's got to be a part of you that's like, man, I don't want to do that stuff anymore. <laughs> I got I got I I said to Steve-O a couple of years ago, I said. You know, everybody's like, will you do another jackass? You know, I said, there comes a point where you just have to look at each other and say, are we too old to do this? Are yeah. we going to look like jerk-offs? And then that son of a bitch went on a media tour. <laughs> Larry King, Howard Stern, every show he went on, he's like, my buddy Mike Caldas said we're getting too old to do this. And all my friends yeah. are calling me, and they're like, why are you stopping jackass? I don't have anything to do with it. So what I'm saying is is that uh, uh, are you, is a part of you that you were relieved that you didn't have to go through all that stuff? Um, okay, you were the, you I, I got was, abused. I was more like... Just bitter of the situation. And Jackass 2, I got a high five for good press when I was drunk at the LAX airport and I just got a gift of brass knuckles that said Island Def Jam on it because CKY, my brother, just got yep. signed to the label. Yep. So I put it in my pink bag, which had an iPod in it and brass knuckles. I put it through the airport. They're like, that's illegal in the state of California. You know? I'm like, well, I'm from the state of Pennsylvania. How the hell am I supposed to die? I'm like, you know what? It's a $20,000 gift, but just keep it. I got to make this flight. They're like, oh, you're not getting on the flight. You're going to jail for, for a brass felon. knuckles. Ugh. So I had to pay 20 grand to get it expunged. And, um, but but they high five me like, dude, the movie's coming out and you're right. all over the news. Now I'm drunk at the Lux Hotel with public intoxication. They consider me a liability because I'm 43 now, not 21. And they they had me sign this contract. Did I had to pay 90 grand to go to 90 days of rehab and 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 
wavelengths and then pay for $800 sessions twice a week for a therapist and then neurofeedback. Then I had to piss randomly when it beeps at an urgent care. And then I had to blow into a sober link four times a day. And if I'm camping with my son and there's no interweb, I got to cancel the whole thing, Holy drive cow. 30 minutes down the road to a diner. Oh, wow. It was very, oh, and plus I did my whole day occupied of going to AA meetings, finding out that alcohol is bad and it's not any good. I'm very aware of that. <laughs> so when I show up on set, it's usually like I'll kick Knoxville in the nuts, I'll high five Steve O, whatever. But this time it's like blow into this thing. Yeah. All right, it's zero. You're lucky. Now go out and be funny. It's like, no, I don't feel like being yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah, you kind of break it down what a little bit. It? But you know what, though? You, there's got to be a part of you that knows that those guys do it from a uh, – they're not – you're not an actor that they don't want on the set. You're a guy that they love, and they don't want you to die. And that's kind of how I – look, I don't know you as a person, but I know you as a fan. I'm a fan of yours. And when these things happen, I was like, man, I don't want to wake up one day yeah. and read that something well, happened. If and and I know that's to tough. Do, to... If you tell me not to do something, I'm going to do it. So He's if you're the type it, yeah. of dude to yeah. take my Miller's light out of my hand and dump it down the sink, then I'm going to go buy a case. Right. It's like, you idiot. I was just going to have one, yeah. and now you went and done that. Now I'm going to go buy a kegger so we could have an inverted naked keg stand. <laughs> <laughs> did y'all you know, read about the Rodner Hotel? No, what, tell me what this is. So they didn't even, I don't even think anybody knows. So when I kicked me. the Bentley windshield out of my story, foot, go though. ahead. Yeah, yeah, because this was one of the, because uh, uh, what you're saying, which I love, uh -huh. because obviously being a fan, everyone knows what he's been involved with. However, I'm the number one witness over here that he gets put in situations that mm -hmm. are strange. So after I drove five days, I can say it really quickly without getting in any kind of trouble, but he was basically stolen from me and it's yeah. all going to, it's coming in October 16th, but you know, we had a hotel. I drove five days. Yes. It was prior to the anklet. Yes. It was prior to a few things. He'd had a couple drinks that day, but nothing was happening. And literally I went upstairs to a hotel, long story longer, came downstairs. There's officers. I'm like, what's happening? The dogs are upstairs. We're just trying to go to bed. He can't stay there. I can, but he can't. Oh, brother. They basically take him away from me. It's like one in the morning. And then, Drop him off at the Radnor Hotel. I have the phone, the credit cards, everything, his ID. And I'm thinking, okay, wait, one o'clock in the morning. Yes, there's a hold in the, hold in the windshield. But the police just put me in the back of the car and dropped me off at a different him, hotel and yeah. said, check in. I'm like, wait a minute. So they I don't have my ID on my credit card and on so my they phone. It's they all upstairs in the hotel I already in. bought. They wouldn't let him in. So now I'm riding around at one o'clock in the morning. It's pitch black. I've never been in the state before. And I go to the Radnor Hotel. I can call them out because they're trying to call us out. So right, that's okay. Right. Their, their uh, stories are completely false. Um, so basically, I ask where he is. The guy's like, he walks this way. It's like the abyss. And you just have to go try and to I'm find like him? I'm screaming his name at this oh. point, like an episode of Dateline. And, and you're wandering around with no, no ID. No, 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 on the median oh, no. of the highway, sleeping better. in the middle, yeah, <laughs> staring so at the moon. Sudden, <laughs> I'm, I'm an actress, so all of a sudden, this cop like appears slowly. He's like, are you looking for Bam? Uh -huh. Well, yeah, I am. And basically, he was sleeping in the median. Wrap it up a little bit. All false lies. Be careful what you read and watch what you think because um, it was just false. They basically wow. took him, gave him public intoxication. I already had a room. If yeah. I would have just went up so to lies. it, you would have went to bed. Lies, lies. So they took me to a hotel without a different one, without any money or credit cards. So I fell asleep on the median of the highway, and then they give me for public intoxication. Well, you made you me. You left them they there. Put you there. put yeah. me. And then I had I wanna, a room wanna, that I'm not allowed up at. I want to clear up the time paper. And they wouldn't let her come with me. The, the paperwork and said I, it was 4 a.m. It, it was 11.30 no p.m., by the way, when they finally, it was 4 a.m. when it ended because right. they had been harassing us for four hours. Oh my so God. And Newtown Square police goes, I'm really upset with the Radnor police. Yeah. yeah, you think? Oh. Mr. He Mr. already Mr. had a room with his girlfriend and yeah. the dogs and you said so. that he can't go up to the room and she can't come with me? And then they so dump you, you out me, with no you ID? Me out Nothing. at 1 a.m. To check into a place that I have no money or credit card for. And then by the so time the story. So now I sleep in the median of the highway and I get a public intoxication? You put me there. By the time the story gets out, Bam's crazy. Yes. He was found on a highway yes. and all and that it, stuff. It said he was arguing with a woman. No, I was. I actually told the police officer he'll calm down. And they were like, "Well, he's endangering you and yourself." No, he isn't. Oh. I'm sitting here laughing because y'all are making a big deal about his windshield when y'all know exactly who he is because you're getting fan photos. Right, and right, I'm right. Take him with you. That's insane. So you that you know what you need? You need uh, you need a hundred acres in the middle of nowhere and we're you live in a tent where everybody can just leave you alone. E even on the flight here on Frontier, yeah, this we're crazy. flying from Trenton to Tampa. And I fell asleep on her lap right. on the flight and before it took off. And he's like, sir, can I talk to you for a minute? I'm oh like, my God. I'm like yeah. he's the like, how much have you had to drink? I'm like, nothing. Yeah. I have an alcohol monitor. And he's like, so 
how much are you going to order on this flight? I'm like, nothing. I can't drink. I'll go to jail. Yeah. He's like, so you're not drunk? He's like, I'm like, no, I'm just tired. I you're, was sleeping on my girlfriend. I would, uh, yeah, how could you not so expect then, to yeah. want to put your head on her lap? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't, but this is, is, is going to be a hard thing for you now because people are going to assume uh, that you're that you're drinking if they don't know your personality. And now, yeah. now these jerk-offs in, in airplanes are trying to start trouble. That happens way more than people know. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. It's going to be rough for you. It's going to be rough yeah. for you for the next couple of months. But I'm I'm glad that you're that you're sober. Are you, do you feel strong about staying sober? Hundred percent. Yeah. Before when when you when friends and family sabotage me and say, "Bam, let's meet up at the Ruth Chris Steakhouse and have a nice fancy dinner." All right, that sounds like fun. Let's yeah. do it. And it's not. It's an intervention, intervention, and they're all make. So it's like you sons of bitch. So I'm already ready. No matter if it's 90 days or the two years of Florida Shuffle, Guinness Book of World Records, longest Florida Shuffle. <laughs> and when, when I get out, it's like, so you did two years. Did you learn anything? Yeah, I learned that I'm going to open up a White Claw as soon as I get out. Uh, F you. Oh, man. So now, uh, now, you know, I I usually would drink to cure my manic bipolar. I have five different racing thoughts in my head going a mile a minute. So I'm thinking, like, what new skate ramp could I build that no one's ever doing? What new skate trick could I do? That no Maybe I shouldn't have told that dude to go F himself later. Like, nah, you know what? I'm, he could go F himself. I'm, I'm all, yeah, over you're all over the place. So when I sip on alcohol, it slows it down. And any kind of pill that they try to give me that isn't addictive. Right. Like, you know, like a Xanax or a Valium would probably calm me down, but it's addictive. So they got to give you Vistarol or Stratera or something. What about some of And, and it, it gives you all these side effects of erectile dysfunction, stiff muscles, weight gain, hair loss. Yeah. It's like, I, I don't want any. You'd rather have. Well, let me ask you this. What, what, you go to therapy? Yeah, I have, I have therapy once and, a week. And yeah. nobody there. Said, so I have really bad anxiety. I, yeah. And I, took, I take Lexapro. Yeah. But before I took Lexapro, I was very much in the I'm everywhere. I got a million thoughts. And it yeah. changed my life. So yeah. there's nothing like that that they've ever tried with you that's been effective? Well, that's... I, I don't like the side effects. Like, I have no side effects. If, if, I still get boners. I've, I've taken if it skateboarding yeah. is I've my passion it. and boning her out is my passion, <laughs> I have erectile dysfunction and stiff muscles and weight gain, so I'm top you heavy. You don't want to, yeah. I, I, then I have no passion to do anything, and these pills aren't worth it. I'd rather sip on a white wine. I know. I get you. I have a cloudy toenail, and when I hear the side effects, it could be a heart attack. I'm like, I'd rather just have an ugly toenail than, than possibly yeah. have a heart attack. And so. it's like you, you, know go to, you go to treatment to get off of drugs. Well, I went in on Adderall and alcohol. I was on 18 different drugs. I was such a zombie yeah. that, that I was better off on Adderall and alcohol down at the bar. At least I'm chit-chatting, cracking jokes. <laughs> I love sober, crazy, bam. This is great. I yeah. I was going to say, he's like really artistic. So as long as there's like, you know, he writes a lot, he draws a lot, his artwork is fantastic. Yeah, it's so. great. You have to, he has to have that outlet for totally. his expression. That's yep. why it's all inside you. I don't know all the history, so I don't, I'm not, where are you with your family now, with your parents? Are you good with them or no? Um, it, It's just a, it's just a rough situation because I got this Britney Spears tattoo that says, oops, they did it to me too. And I'm still getting to the bottom of everything. Uh, this girl, BJ, investigates, a.k.a. the surprise witness. She went to law school and she does, you know, interviews, a podcast about like things like Britney Spears. And she did the free BAM movement, which I wasn't allowed to see for two years because they wouldn't give me interweb in rehab. Wow. So finally, when I got to see what was going on when I got out, I was like, this lady has bought in every body cam footage, every 911 call ever made on me and every document of me buying a house or selling a house or getting arrested or anything. I'm like, why did you do this? Are you trying to make money? She's like, I don't want any money. My, uh, my husband is a lawyer and I don't need it. I just knew that somebody's screwing around with you. So I'm seeing 911 calls of my guardian, Lima, saying to the police, we have to, listen, don't tell Bam, but we have to make it seem like we're on his side. You have to lock him up and throw oh, away the key. He's schizophrenic. He's armed and dangerous. Armed and dangerous. I've never fired a gun in my life except for Lil Xan once. And then, and danger, no. And then schizophrenic, the only reason why they tell you that you're schizophrenic to a police officer is so they don't believe a word or you listen said. To you. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so you don't know who you can trust, and yeah. the, now you're the only Me. one. And You're the you, only one that you, that you can you trust. Over there? Yeah. <laughs> so if you say you have to make it seem like you're on Bam's side, that means you're not on my side. Right. If you told the police, hey, we're on Bam's side, but we have to lock him up because he's mental, then I get it. Maybe, yeah, but we have to make it seem like means you're not. Yeah. Have you ever seen any of these BJ Investigate videos? The, yes, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. there's a few of them. By the way, when you say BJ, me. it's the hottest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> is it the microphone? Yeah, and now, and now BJ is getting sued by Lima. Yeah, it's a disaster. 400 pages of nonsense lies saying that, you know, Novak Stevo and me are representing Lima. I, I've never even approved of any of this. In fact, I'm representing BJ, yeah. and they're saying that, 
like Lima said that BJ has drugged me up. I showed up to do an interview with her with a cup of red wine, and she was very she disappointed was in me. Yeah, she does she no drink. drugs and no alcohol. Oh. And she's just trying way, to shut BJ down because she doesn't want to get exposed. Because when that happens, she might go to jail or she's definitely getting fired. Wow. But I'm sure Steve-O doesn't know his name is in that 400 page yeah. paperwork. Holy cow! But you got you got a lot going on. I'm 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 even more proud of you that you've been sober this whole time. What's that tattoo <laughs> on your face? I I can't see it. Oh, right here. Yeah. It says, no more tattoos. It says, <laughs> it says Phoenix the Wolf. Oh. Okay, good. and then this one in Arabic says "unearned wisdom is poison." Oh man, this guy! You, I, I'll tell you. So you, I always tell the people you you in order to succeed, you need to have you need to have a best friend. You need to have somebody that you can totally trust. You seem like you guys have that kind of relationship yeah. now, and and you have somebody looking out for you. Yeah. So hopefully, this will be a good jump start for you to be able to kind of get things in a row and find out who the other people are that are on your side and who right. aren't. Man. Right, and and you know that that's the thing, like. With with my mom, I don't know if she w- was putting mo- me away to rehab because she wants me to get better or she wants my brother to continue having the recording studio at my house. And if I am locked away and I can't come back, then he could. Ke- I don't know what's going on. And I'm still getting to the bottom you of it. But I'm just taking a, a part break of, from everything. You think your mother may be trying to put you away so that your brother could use your recording equipment? I mean, think I don't know your parents or your brother, well, but say that out loud. That doesn't even sound normal. Well, the last time I went home unannounced. Right. My mom didn't say, oh, welcome home. She said, oh, so when are you leaving? Oh. And then she says, bam, get your crap together. And I go, well, mom, all my crap is at Castle Bam, but if I go there, I get arrested. So how am I going to get my crap together? And then she goes, bam, we just love you to death. Well, why don't you love me to life? Because you're you're killing me. You know, you ever see, uh, remember that Less Than Zero with Robert Downey Jr.? Yeah. yeah. I'll never forget. I watched that in high school when I was about that high school age and, uh, he goes back to his father for the last time and he asks him for the money and the father says, I can't do it this time. I yeah. can't give it to you. And I think that's now that I have a 17 year old kid, I don't can't imagine ever being in that position, but yeah. you get to that point where you feel like you have to say that. I think your parent, I don't know your parents, bam. I'm just a fan of the show, but yeah. I have, I have kids. You have a kid. I, I love my kid more than anything in the world. And I would do anything I could to make sure they're there. I believe that your parents love the hell out of you and they're just scared. No parent wants to think about having a, accidentally lose their child you know and you're so shot out of a cannon you they can never tell whether or not you're safe or not for instance my mom is very controlling yeah. as a matter of fact what mother isn't yeah but but when i met danny i was like instantly like this we have such a connection i she's feel that irish she's sicilian she's 43 like me she's born in jersey we get we get along so well so she's driving the Bentley, and she's already in, like, Amarillo, Texas. And my mom gives her a call, and she's like, just so you know, Bam is mental, and he's not capable of a relationship. You should just turn around now and delete his number. And it's like, yeah. how dare you? She's like, well, Bam, you just got out of a relationship earlier, and we were just trying to help you out. I'm like, helping me out? I really like this girl, and you're saboing me. Yeah, well, you know, they don't know. They don't know that you're uh, on the road to getting back to where you need to be, and they also don't know if she, and I don't believe that you are from the first day I met you, but they don't know if she's after your money, of if course. she's after your Fame, yeah, I understand. you know, so they have well, to kind no of look out. She, she makes yeah. her own yeah. money. Own she drama. makes her own money doing runway shows and and stretch coaching and whatever. It yeah. doesn't really matter. But that's, yeah. that's the thing. I can't when I you know this happened. It was more of like I have my own right. life. Right, right. You're not. You're, you're, but it's yeah. easy to see now talking to yeah. you that you're a professional. Where you get along with your family. Oof. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah, but I mean that's a yeah, that's I a common it. bond, you know well, what I mean? Yes, People... yes, but it's strange. Like her dad lives in Secaucus, New Jersey, and we're like right he's near Trenton Bergen. over the bridge, which is only like right. less than an hour away. And he's always like, you know, I can't wait. To... They talk every day. All he wants is White Castle for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know the reason. One... <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, I can't wait to see you. Can't wait to see you. So. She's like, hey, we're like 10 minutes away visiting Bam's skate friend, Tim O'Connor, down the road. Should we come visit? Oh, you know, right now I'm kind of tied up. So uh, it's I complicated. I don't like that either. Yeah, yeah, it's complicated. But, you know, I have, you know, I, th- I always say that you pick your family, you pick your friends. And, you know, oh, you're playing the guitar. For Sorry, me. no, I got to let the, uh, serenaded the uh, here this morning. next this guest amazing. in. You pull that whammy bar. There's a <laughs> <up there. laughs> But, you know, my whole point is, is that his family, I don't get involved. I It's his, it's his parents. Right. You know, I have my mom. I love my mom. We have issues. People have issues. I, I stay away from Normally, that. I wouldn't even bring this up. But yeah. Watching the show, I feel like I know them. I, of clearly course. I don't. They're very nice to me. I yeah. have nothing to negative. And, and like I said, my whole uh, relationship with my son and everything I saw. So I'll, part of me wants you to all, the, want you to all be there. But I know yeah. that that's not always It'll reality. It'll take time, so. I think. Time, timing heals. 
Um, how I, I want to be your friend in the state. I want you to be able to come here uh, whenever you want. I like without I, being I, in the Florida shuffle. I without love being that. in the Florida shuffle, Vim, listen to me. They kick you out of the hotel. You come in here. You sleep right on this we'll couch. Right I don't want you in the. Couch. I don't want you in the middle of the uh, road anymore. Uh, <laughs> Thank so, you. Yeah. If, yeah. If, if you even if I if you spotted me at the mall or something, and you were like Pinellas County. I'll, get, I'll be like, oh, Pinellas County. <laughs> <laughs> I, have P, I have PTSD really hearing that word. Yeah. Well, we're listen. In we're in Hillsborough <laughs> County right now, so you're safe. I, 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 I want you here under the best conditions yeah. only. I, now, are you here just for this weekend for this event? Yeah, and, and then, then I've, I've court on Monday. But, uh, we'll be back. So, we'll be back. So on my last Pinellas County court hearing, the judge was like, you know what, Steve Timmer? This, you've extended his stay 11 times, 90 days apiece. I don't care if he's on crack, if he's on heroin. He is getting out when the yeah. date is happening. He's getting out of the Florida shuffle. And then... Guess what he does? He goes down to Jupiter, Florida, and files it with a new judge who doesn't know that I've been doing this, thought that I was what pressing to the system. Yeah. So I had to do another 90 days and then another Jupiter. 90 after that in, in Banyan Boca. Listen to me. I watched this documentary about how these how these uh, rehab places. No, no, no. They don't because let me tell you why. This documentary was so enlightening that I almost opened a rehab because I would be an instant gazillionaire. Oh yeah! Every time they take your uh, your blood pressure, uh, your drug test, your P test, yep. they get to charge five hundred dollars. Every oh, time yeah. they take your blood pressure, they get to charge. Uh -huh. So they want you to stay there. They want you to be in there because it's a huge money maker for them. And, and they're giving you jail food, and you get a cot for yeah. thirteen hundred dollars a night. And yeah. then don't forget, like, say you're friends and I'm your patient. I could you be can at the just four swap seasons. me back and forth. Right. And you take fifty grand. You take 50 grand and i'm your bank account that's insane okay so that's how it works oh, no. and, and then the ultimate thing what happened oh, you break it he's then throwing the, microphones the <laughs> ultimate thing is you want you want these people want to be, get better and we want you to get better and yeah. then if you're trapped in that loop it's never yeah. gonna it's never gonna happen so well, for six hundred and sixty thousand dollars of having a cot and basically jail food some places we have good chefs but but i could i could have just went to Thailand rented an island and and, and been alone. A, a buffet feast every single <laughs> night, living it up in the biggest suite with a waterfall pool for this kind of prices. Oh man! I oh, well, look. And I, as long as I'm on a dry island and I can't drink, right, then that could have been fine. my rehab. I would have been better off doing that. There's just people in there that need help. That's all yeah. I'm gonna say. Well, look. I hope that you uh, stay on this sober thing. It seems like you're you're uh, dedicated I'm to it. I'm not gonna f this one up. Don't f it. Yeah, don't lose this. This is not. I mean, you do good with girls, but you're not gonna get much better. You're not yeah. gonna get a full package and have a girl who's good looking and has a job and brains and all that stuff and actually likes you back. Well, what, like you? what about yeah. her being in the itty bitty titty committee? Yeah. <laughs> oh, very Listen, proud of I that. Love it. Listen, welcome to Florida. We'll get new, <laughs> we'll get you new bolt-ons before <laughs> you know it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is the hang place on, to do hang that. Hang on. I've been here for 16 years and we're still this way. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's blue Look, doctors good. everywhere. I gotta tell you, it, it, it's a good package. It's You're fine. okay. Works yeah. for the runway. Yeah. I you know you know who needs to get boobs? Ugly girls. Because you need to you need to kind of take away from the other thing. I always tell the pretty face, girls, you're fine. Face. Yeah, my face girls, everything. Yeah, face. exactly. Yeah. You're fine. Just keep stretching and you'll be good. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad we got to meet you. I really appreciate you being here and being yeah. on time and all that stuff today. Yeah. I think it's a good sign to show people where your head's at. And if you want to meet Bam this weekend, you can go to the Spookalli. My it's, head's it, at between her legs. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously not on an airplane anytime. Uh, yeah, yeah, no trouble, kidding, right? You, know. you can't even rest can't on even a good, on a hot girl's lap without being <laughs> in trouble. There's, there's, there's no high mileage on front. Or I can't say the name. Yeah, <laughs> oh, we are, Frontier but stinks as an airline. Okay, <laughs> Frontier and Spirit should all crash into each other and, and, and the, disappear. The, the guy did not like get it. I'm like, don't you understand? I had nothing to drink because I have an alcohol monitor. If I even have a sip of a Miller's Light, I'm going to jail. He's like, so how much are you going to drink? on the plane. I'm like, Zilchola, I so, can't drink. Look, yeah. Before we go, I do want to say because the plane was pretty intense, I stood up and I'm like, can we just not do this in front of the whole class? Well, that's what people want now. They were standing there and then I'm I'm, I'm trying to not be, I'm yeah. protective of yeah. my friends and people. So then we sit down and he goes, well, if you have an attitude, we can't. I'm like, just yeah. back Here, up. Check this out. If I'm a stewardess and I come up to you on the airplane Crazy. and you're not doing anything wrong and I say, sir, you need to calm down. Yeah. And then everybody turns and you're like, calm, I am yeah. calm. Yeah. Sir, relax. Same I am relaxed. Yeah. Even you talking it's all like, of a sudden becomes, oh, that yeah. guy's crazy. It's it's like you're the one causing the scene, lady. Yeah. yeah. And all you have to do is basically go up to a guy who's reading a book and be like, sir, calm down. You need to relax. It's like, <laughs> I am calm, lady. Yeah.
So uh, you need to stop raising your voice. You're raising your voice. Anyway, Thank don't you. get nauseous on the plane anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, it's a pleasure meeting both of you. you Thank too. you for yeah, coming here. Yeah. Thank so you to your Kala, uh, today, Spookala. today, tomorrow, the next day. Um, we'll be there. Look, it's Bam at the fairground. It's at the fairground. It's Bam. It's Kevin and, and Jay. It's uh, Scotty and from Antrax. The entire cast of Scream. Scream. I mean, this is going to be a good one. Good time. Yeah. yeah, some of these ones really suck, but this one's going to be a really good one. Uh, and go. And, uh, and I want to give a shout out to uh, Alex Campo from Siesta Key. If you're hearing me, come up and visit because I'm only here till Sunday. And Jake Gillardi, the pro skater from Sarasota, hit me up. And Brian Pinger, my lawyer, rock and roll. I just, I just <laughs> need Alex to bring his hot wife if he doesn't oh. mind. Oh, yeah, Alyssa, you into that please. a little bit? Well, I mean, she's like flawless. So yeah. How not? How could you not? You like you make out with girls too? I mean, I have. Would you and Bam? She ever? bought fuzzes once. No, like... I'm too selfish. I'm not, no. Those days are over. But, no. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, I'm too. Don't rule it out. Don't rule it out. Let's just, let's just say maybe one don't day. Don't rule it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's still early. Bam, what's don't the Don't rule it up. Out, grow up. What's the best? Uh, what What's the best? Uh, uh, country for uh, jackass people. Like when you go there, you're like, how did these people know who we are? Oh. Um, uh, well, or skate or just BAM fans? England, Scotland, Ireland, or gnarly? Like really? Um, um, France, not so much. <laughs> um, but uh, Spain, yeah, Australia, big time, and New Zealand. Um, Japan. So basically, Japan, yeah, yeah, Japan. Huh? Um, I, I mean, Canada and all that is, is good, but uh, you could go to like random places like Romania, and they'll sure sure know who you That's are. That's so insane. But it if you venture right down to Turkey, they, they won't even know have a clue. Really? Yeah, it's weird. Or the it's flea market. The flea market. He's pretty popular. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. Doyle's if I go to any flea, flea market, market. <laughs> there's... Jackass, he's oh here. God. He's oh, here. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. one guy comes up to him as we're leaving. It's like late at night. And he goes, I don't know if y'all know, but this is Bam Margin. Yeah. Like the whole flea market's like, what? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Dude, remember. any place you can get Chinese stars, they love Bam. Yeah. And, and at the airport uh, during a layover, not on this flight, but the other one, this this black dude with su- shades on is walking past as I'm waiting for my layover. And he double takes me and he goes, I can't say the a-. He goes, A hole. Like he calls me that. I'm like, excuse me? He's like, A hole? And I'm like, do you mean Jack is like, yeah, I love that show. Hey, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what it's called, dude. I was getting ready to dump my beer on you. Oh, that's awesome. It's called Jack is not a Bam, I'm I'm great to uh, I'm very uh, fortunate to finally meet you. I appreciate yeah. you coming in. Very yeah. lovely meeting you. You seem like a you. great person. Yeah, we'll be uh, back. Uh, please Thank be you. back. Stay in touch with us when you're Stay here. And uh, hey, if you get popped here, let me know. I'll hide you out in the backyard. They'll never we'll even know you're here. And yeah. we'll we'll the gated the community. I'm safe here. Gated community. Yeah, I got a I got a huge tortoise in the backyard. You'll have a ball just hanging out. They over can't here. baker act me in this gated nope. community. They I'm won't, all, I'm they won't get you. I, oh, Sign man, I'm the keeper of BAM. I got you. <laughs> the BAM uh, keeper. <laughs> uh, we got to take a break. Tim Meadows from Saturday Night Live joins us next on 1025 The Bone. Yeah, man. You're listening.